here's something to chew on. This PB&J sandwich is not just a delicious sandwich, it's a way for my body to get energy. So where does it go after I eat it? Let's find out. Welcome to Jocelyn Presents. Hey, Jocelyn. Ah, that's me. Hello, scientists. Jocelyn here. Welcome back. Today, we are talking all about digestion, which is when your body takes the food that it eats and breaks it down into tiny pieces. <laughs> so we can have the energy and nutrients that it needs to grow stronger and stay healthy. Digestion starts in our mouth. When we chew, our teeth grind up the food into smaller and smaller pieces. The saliva in our mouth wets the food and makes it easier to swallow. Let's see where my PB&J is now. After I swallowed the food, it traveled down a long tube called the esophagus, which connects the mouth to our next stop, the stomach. So the PB&J is in my stomach right now. My stomach has muscles that are churning and mashing it up into even smaller pieces. My stomach also has hydrochloric acid, which helps to dissolve the sandwich before it moves on. The process in my stomach could take up to an hour. So while we wait, I'm going to show you an activity that you can try at home. Okay, let's pretend that you had a banana sandwich. Throw some banana in here and some bread. So as you start to chew, your teeth are going to break up the food little by little. And the saliva in your mouth is going to help give the food some moisture so that it's easier for you to swallow later on. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water and we're gonna chew. Chew, chew, chew. After you chew, you're going to swallow and the food's gonna travel down your esophagus and land in your stomach. So we're gonna take this mashed up food here and put it in our bag. She's going to act as her stomach. This is going to get messy. Okay. The walls of our stomach have muscles that are going to start to break down the food even more. Our stomach also has hydrochloric acid. So I'm gonna add vinegar, which is acetic acid. It's not as strong as hydrochloric acid. And I added a little bit of food coloring so that you could see it. Close the bag for safety. So our stomach breaks down the food through two different methods. By movement, physically breaks it down, but also chemically with the acid that it has. All right. So after the stomach, your food is going to move into your small intestine. So for this part, we are going to use a pair of tights. I just cut off the bottom and <laughs> This is where it gets messy. Okay, we're going to cut off a little part of this bag to get all of this mush into the tight. Let's see how it goes. Beautiful! So these tights represent your small intestine. So you can start to squeeze the food and all of this juice that's coming out is filled with water and nutrients that your body's going to absorb. Squeeze. We're trying to get as much of the water out through the tights. So you're just gonna keep squeezing it from one side to the other. Try not to splash anybody. Now after your small intestine, this is going to move into your large intestine, which is going to try to absorb as much of the water that's left as possible. And then whatever is left after that, our body's going to push that out as waste and we usually just flush this down the toilet. Let's check back in with my PB&J. Last time we saw it, it was in my stomach. Now it's moved into my small intestine. This is where my body will absorb all of those yummy nutrients. This will probably take a few hours. Afterward, all of that mashed up food is going to move into my large intestine, which will soak up the rest of the water and minerals. A fun fact is that the small intestine is actually longer than the big intestine. We just call it small because it's not as wide. The small intestine is about 20 feet, while the big intestine is only five. Well, I don't know about you, but I've really worked up an appetite. It's so cool to think how hard our bodies are working, even when we don't realize it. Well, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Stay curious.